right, so we're back and we're ready to tackle this tile. Uh, first thing I want to mention is that since the previous tile we had a loitering penalty, um, we're actually only going to be at four treasures for this 6x6. Six six. Loitering penalties apply through the rest of the act, so one uh, loitering penalty in the first tile like we have uh, affects us through the rest of the scenario. We have our cards. And we're getting ready to roll these fools. Now, um, every, not not every trap. Kenny can verify this, but most traps have some kind of bonus that goes along with them. Yes. Uh, and in this case, uh, we can disarm the dragon fire trap. However, if we kill a bunch of idiots along with it, then. Uh, we get extra special bonuses, and I think that's what we're going to try to do. Uh, I know I have some pretty good cards to make that happen, as long as the ac the apprentice uh, protects me, because I can't afford to receive eight crawler <laughs> attacks. Well, I'll see you have to be able do. to take care of these, because I can basically appear here, attack this guy, move here, giving them line of sight. It's going to fire this way, and it will kill a bunch of people. Yes. So we can't have the darkness activate, and you have to take care of as many of these as possible. Should be able to take care of some of them. As many as possible. Well, oh, a couple. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll start uh, with Shadow's Reach. That's just Shadow's Reach right now. That's one AP. I appear next to a target within three squares. One, two, three. One attack on one target, not considered a move, so I have not moved. I get my 1d10 for myself, 1d10 for my butter knife, and my fate dice, and it's a minus two target number. But you won't want to take the movement bonus, because you're going to be moving. That's right. I am going to be moving, so I need to factor in the cautious move uh, now, which is minus one target number. need a four. No, no bonuses for me? I, I have no bonuses. All right, well, here goes nothing. Better do it. Woo! Yay. Got one success. <clears throat> All right, I'm not a rage monster, so I'm not a Donica, so I don't get any bonuses for that. Exactly. So but I the grubber dies. Increase my threat one, and I will move cautiously here. Now, basically, that sets me up to get the bonus. Um, yeah, the uh, bonus for the dragon's breath trap is as if. Um, the Dragon Bust Trap activates and kills three minions in a single refresh phase. We get to add a blue treasure token to the treasure bag after the trap is disarmed. Is it a 1-3? or a 1-3-5. So it's going to hit me, these two, and these four. Yeah, it's going to go crazy. All right. Uh, how many times do I need to try to disarm it? Uh, it only needs to be disarmed two times at target number five. All right. All right. All right. I'll let you go. I'm probably just going to move into position because I don't want to generate any extra AP until we need to. I'll move two over this way. That's the far. That's the wrong way. I thought you were gonna. I'm, I'm giving myself some here breathing and, room too. Charge through these guys with uh, right in the edge. <laughs> yeah. If only I was the soldier, I could have destroyed them. All right. Fine. So that's what you're doing. Yeah, really? that's that's what I'm doing. You sure you don't have like fingers of eye and you can just go boom, 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 boom. I've got some spells, but I'm going to save right. it until All right. things happen. So I'm done. Kenny's done. Yes. So we will go into uh, the refresh phase. The hand hand phase first. Yeah. Um, I'm going to save Blood of Gaia. I'm going to save Now You See Me for obvious reasons. Right. <laughs> uh, and then I'll get rid of... No, I'm going to ditch. I, I had a Shadows card and I'm ditching it. So I'll go ahead and build my hand up. My threat goes down. Oops. And my threat was already at zero, so not very threatening right now, apparently. Ooh, very good. All right, so we passed and we've got our cards, and now uh, we're going to raise the AP up by two because there's two different monster types. Crawlers and grubbers. Yep. <laughs> And then during this uh, phase, we would also, you know, go to the, we check the list in the refresh phase and trap results is one of them. So the trap is going to activate. And 
The brigand is going to get hit and take a damage. I only had four hit points, so I can't take afford to do this more often. <laughs> that much <laughs> no, longer. Right. So the next thing that so happens So I take is, a damage. Yep, and the other effect of the trap is is that unless he discards two cards immediately, he's going to take another damage. And so I will discard two cards. In this case, I will get rid of Sprint and one with the darkness. And you're saying, well, wait, wait a minute. You have a Now You See Me. You could have dodged that. Uh... No, I can't because an interrupt is only used during a darkness cycle. It can't be used during the refresh phase, so I can't do anything to dodge that trap result. That's one of the things that makes traps so so bad. So I'm going to take my damage, uh, but I'm going to discard two cards, and I'm going to keep two Now You See Me's and a Cunning card, which I had drawn. So uh, I'm ready for their activation next round. All right, so that was the first part of the cone. The next... Well, we'll, we'll, show, the, we'll show the realm tile and the removal of the the guys when we come back from the darkness. Uh, thing to note is I spent an action point so we're not loitering so mm -hmm. that's uh, we don't need to do anything else with the darkness board. And now we'll go back to the realm tile and you can see who else gets removed. So I took damage. Yep and then the next part of the cone would hit three spaces so these two grubbers are killed and then the next is five so all four of these crawlers get killed. Now we've already met the bonus requirement, which is kill three minions in one refresh phase with the Dragon's Breath Trap. And and you may be saying, hey, you guys each killed three people, so you should be drawing, uh, you should be putting treasure out here. Uh, that would be incorrect because we didn't kill them. The trap killed them. If we would have killed them, we dropped treasure. But if a trap kills them, you're not gaining any treasure. So we have not spawned any treasure on this particular. But you also don't gain any threat. All right, now that all that trap business is taken care of, uh, we're ready to start our new hero cycle. Do you and, have any uh, healing potions by chance? I don't know. Well, let me check. Nope. Oh, I do have one. Oh, you should uh, probably give that to me sometime. <laughs> I will give it to you after I murder. You don't have very things. many hit points either. No, I got three. Hey, all right. If I kill these guys, I don't need hit points. <laughs> all right, so. Let's do this. I'm going to play Fingers of Aya. That's two AP. Yep, so we're up to five. Spawn some treasure. And I can attack one target within three range, and it will jump to an additional target for every ongoing effect I clear. I have three ongoing effects right now, so I'm going to be able to kill all four of them if I hit. Uh, it's a minus one TN since I didn't move. Yeah, I assume you're going to target the crawlers, because you could yeah. target the grubbers or the crawlers. I would rather you target the crawlers. I'm doing the crawlers. Why? Because poison. Poison, and it removes an AP for us. Right. I know I can get rid of all of them. Yep. Uh, okay, so I get a minus one TN, so I only need a three, and I have no other bonuses, so I'm just using 2d10 and a fake die. Let's not screw it up. <laughs> just need a three, come on. Okay, yeah, fives. So, boom, 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 I kill these three, and treasure token appears, and this fourth guy dies as well, and I'm going to flip over my ongoing cards just to remind myself that I actually cleared them. Now, that, that was pretty quick, so I'll... The Fingers of Aya targets one, one creature, that would be this one, and then it jumps to another creature within two spaces for each additional card you clear. He has three ongoings out, so this one's dead, and he cleared three, so we would jump again, again, and again. Now, technically, he could have chose not to have it jump as many times if he wanted to have some ongoings left out, but he chose to use them all because why not kill all the grubbers and be done with it? I concur. Yes, and I will gain four threat because I did not roll my fate die symbol, which is arcane. Right. It's up to you now. I'm going to try to disarm the trap. It's a good idea. Uh, I have two movement points to do so. I also have a card called Cunning, which gives me an additional d10 to a non-combat action. Now, that is one non-combat action, so I will use my Cunning card, um, and I get one d10 for being me. Yep. And then I get another D10 for this non-combat action for my cunning card. So that's two D10, and I'm looking for target number what? Five. Five. So let's not screw it up. Well, Brian? One and three. Well, that... sorry. <laughs> you could still use your other MP to disarm it once. I think I'm probably going to move Run away. here. That's a, that's a good idea. Now, why did I move there? So you'd be safe from the cone effect. Right, because it's here... Here and here. Yay. You tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried and failed. I tried and died. All right. <laughs> uh, that, I'm going to...
keep uh, uh, my Now You See Me because I know what's going to come. Right. Reduce your... No, you're, you're full. Sorry, yeah, there, bro. I can't reduce any threat. You need to move over here and give me that healing potion. I will, but the darkness cycle is going to happen first. I know. <laughs> All right, we've passed and we've gotten our new cards, and so now I'm going to raise the AP meter by one, which will start a darkness cycle. All right. We'll draw a card. Uh, if there are less than four minions, uh, spawn four minions immediately. There is no lair, so we don't have to worry about it. Threat penalty, a mini boss appears at the tile edge close to the hero with the highest threat, which would be really bad if we had a uh, high penalty and hit the threat penalty, but we are not. Uh, they activate, and there is no spawn. So minions, captain, mini boss, and boss. Yeah, let's go. Let's bring them on. I got all kinds of interrupts in my hand, right, so here come the grubbers. They're all gonna attack me. Yes, and one, they're all intelligent, two, so they're three. gonna move around. Yep, this guy goes to here. Two, three, and one, two. So they're like, "Hey, what's up?" Hey. <laughs> he was watching me while I was hacked. All right, I'm gonna. Drop a rat turd on his face and move on. I, I think that's what you do. All right, five attacks. Yep. I have uh, three interrupts in my hand, so. Uh, oh, okay. Well, you'll be fine. Here we go. Need a seven to hit, and I rolled a seven and a ten. I will dodge one. All right. I will dodge two. I will parry one and dodge one. I'll take that. And now you see me. All right. Cool. Well, that is all of their attacks and. Then we go down. Um, allies, there are no. There is no quest in this case. We didn't do a Lord Earring penalty. No one has a status effect. And a trap result. Yes. He can't target it. There is no target priority for him to hit someone, so he will not do his trap. You should explain that a little bit more, because someone's saying, hey, wait a minute, there's a grubber right there. Why doesn't it shoot the grubber? Yeah, it doesn't shoot the grubber because this will always target heroes over um, enemy models. I mean, there has to be a hero right. in its target range in order for it to actually attack. Otherwise, right. it does nothing. Right. Uh, I think we were we both want to grab the treasure, but since I was a treasure grubber on the uh, first tile, I'm going to let Kenny get that treasure, and I'm going to try to disarm this trap. <laughs> and just to <laughs> be a maniac, I'm going to... Generate a lot of AP this time, too. Hey, you didn't tell me you were going to do that. I just wanted to do it. All right, so I'm going to research. That's one AP. And then I'm going to also play Aura of the Elements. That's one AP. Oh, no. Calm down. And then I'm going to... Don't do anything bad. <laughs> blink, which is one AP. Hey, no. I'm moving three spaces of Blink, and I'll spend one movement to pick up the treasure. Yay. Put your bag out here in the camera. Here we go. Maybe it'll be sweet. Oh. It's white. I needed some cash. <laughs> Hefty bags. Yeah. Two gold. Yeah. Go, 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 go. So I'm going to grab some gold, put it in my inventory, and place that back into the card pile. All right. That's I will, all I'm going to do, by the way. I'm going to try to disarm the trap. Uh, I have two movement. Uh, which gives me an opportunity to disarm the trap twice, but I also have a hustle card which gives me a two and additional movement. I'm going to hold on to that movement, uh, but I can use that move card to give me more opportunities to disarm the trap. Um, in, under interacting with objects on page 18, first paragraph, heroes, heroes can interact with objects on the realm tile at any time during their movement, both with normal movement and with move, capital M, bold move cards. Uh, so I'll start my disarm attempts, you my goal. This. This time you got it. I got this. <laughs> With my one dime. Just need a five. I know. Okay, so that's a three. No, that's one movement. Yeah. Two movement. <laughs> that dice might not be good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll play my hustle card and switch my dice out. Good call. All right, it's one, MP, uh, yep. one AP. Yep. Oh, nine, see? That's Maybe. one success. Okay. We'll mark it here with uh, this uh, poison token. Just one more, you got this. Yeah, I got this, man. Five, you got it. I got it. So, this is... Disarmed. Yay! I think I should get, you know, some kind of right. special bonus for that. And as soon as the trap is disarmed, uh, we will add a blue treasure token to the treasure bag. Giving Why? us an opportunity to draw more. I mean, and it was 
The reason for that was is when we completed the bonus part of the trap, which was kill three plus minions with one single attack and a refresh phase, we got to do that immediately. Right. So that's been added. Uh, and uh, we should also get serendipity if I am correct. Yes. So, um, traps disarmed. We succeeded. Um, got the serendipity. Put the blue token in the treasure bag. And I'm done. I'm done done. I am also done. I have bloodletting and fool's gambit. I don't think I'm going to keep either one. Um, because... I think I can do better with what's coming, and they're not going to activate, so... Yeah, I have Glacier's Grip and Arcane Lance, and I'm going to go ahead and keep Arcane Lance just in case I don't get another attack card. Um, you get to lower your threat too, I believe, correct? Uh, I'll be lowering it one to three, yeah, and that's... then Blink's going to go and discard. Alright, all right, so we've passed, we've gotten all our cards, and the AP goes up one for the one monster type that's out. And that's it, uh, that's all. All right, here we go. Uh, Kenny uh, has told me he can kill some people, and I can also kill people, but I don't want to be where I'm at. Um, and I'm going to go into Shadows with Shadow Slip as a reaction, so I'm going to... run. You know, everyone surrounding me and attacking me, and I go into Shadows because I'm that cool. Uh, and then I'm going to Shadows Reach with my combo, and I will appear here and attack yeah so it'd be it's a one AP yeah. so I'll move it up so we'll activate um, but as part of my combo I'm gonna be playing unseen ally so we'll talk about oh. how that works here in a second uh, so I have a 1d10 for myself 1d10 for my butter knife uh, fate dice and then two fate dice for being in shadows and you didn't move and it's like what minus two T yep oh uh, you got it easy yeah so I kill this guy, gain a threat, mm -hmm. and normally I would come out of shadows, but Unseen Ally can be played as part of the combo, it requires shadows with the optional shadows reach, and so during his turn, uh, the Apprentice's turn, I'm providing one other hero, in this case the Apprentice, with an additional d10, an additional fate dice, and an additional damage for one attack, capital A action. In other words, the Brigands in shadows going, hey, psst, 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 psst. But the reason why Unseen Ally is such a good card that most people, I don't know if they just don't realize it, but there's a sentence after that says the Brigand stays in Shadows, capital S. So in effect, I normally would have take, been taken out of Shadows, but if you play Unseen Ally after Shadows Reach, you basically get attack and get to stay in the Shadows for free. So I'm going to stay in the Shadows, I get my kill, and I provide bonuses to my ally, um, and they're going to activate. All right. So we're going to go ahead and draw a darkness card. Yeah. And the event is, for this activation only, we'll treat the threat penalty event as threat level 8, but we're, good. we're fine there. Uh, don't have to worry about the penalty. And we'll go to the activation, which is the minions. And, and I'm in shadows, so they're not going to come to me. And since no one's adjacent, they're not even going to try to notice me. So they're all going to come and attack my apprentice buddy here. Yes. So I get all the attacks. All the snakes. Yes, let me look here. Oh, I have no interrupts, so let's all right. let the cards drop. Now, do you me. want to drink your potion now or wait? Now, why that's important is technically potions happen at any time when you drink it. So he can actually get killed, go to zero health, and if he has a potion, drink his potion and get his health back. I'm waiting, because they could miss. Yeah. So let's go ahead and roll those four attacks. Hey, you got two hits. Well, I absorb one with the Order of the Elements. So that would take the nine away. Yep, and then I will take the other damage, taking me down to two. All right, and, that's, and I'll still wait it out. All right. That's it. That's all for them. Okay. Uh, your, your go. Yeah, so I'm going to play Hero's Edge as a reaction, and... I'm going to... You're going to attack. You might as well give it to you. Yeah, I'm going to give myself the buff because it essentially gives me plus one D10 and plus one Fate Die to attack actions. So you're going to get an additional D10 and Fate Die from me. All right, so that's two and two. And if it was a big guy, you would have done more damage. But Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move two, and I will cast the Mountain Crumbles. So that's a one AP, so the AP is now on one. 
And since I move normal, I'm going to get an extra fade dice. So 1d10, 1 fade die from the Brigand. I get 1d10 and 1 fade dice from Hero's Edge. 1d10 for myself, 1d10 for the Lucky Cup. And then one more fate dice for uh, the normal movement effect of Mountain Crumbles. All right. Now we're talking. Here we go. All right, I only needed one success. I got a 10 in there, and uh, I didn't. arcane symbol? I did not match that. I only rolled three, so that was oh. off to the side. I did not match it, but I hit these two guys and killed them, giving me two threats. I'm at five now. And that's basically all I can do. I filled up my entire player board. Now, notice we didn't do a very good job of generating treasure this turn uh, on this tile, which may haunt us because, you know, the, the, the trap took out so many and then we really didn't kill a bunch of threes, so we're not generating a bunch of treasure and we can't generate any more treasure after this. So um, we may find that that's not going to be good for us. Uh, I am not going to keep any cards. Well, I'll keep one card. No, I won't. I'm going to keep Arcane Lance. I've gone through my deck, so I need to shuffle again. Yes, and I will not be able to lower threat, so I'm going to be still sitting at threat 5. Uh, yeah. It's time for you to... <laughs> oh, I could kill him. I know, but then your threat would be high. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of what, you know, you have to manage your threat somewhat. I got my hand, I got my hand, their turn, they gain one AP in the refresh phase. Yep, so there are uh, two. We didn't incur a loitering penalty, uh, so that is it. Alright, we're moving into third turn. Um, uh, Kenny and I were just discussing uh, that um, he says he can kill them and I can kill one of them and make sure the other one doesn't hurt anyone this next darkness cycle if they activate. Um, and he could kill both of them. And if he kills both of them, his threat's seven. And there's a reason why some people have uh, issues with uh, mini-bosses and threat penalties. is because they don't take the opportunity to not attack. Like, he could attack and kill them, but if he does, he puts himself in jeopardy. He puts himself at seven threat. If he doesn't attack, he can put himself at four threat. That's a big difference. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, go... So I'm going to go ahead and sprint, which takes me out of shadows. One, two, three, and I'll move one more and put myself right there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're not going to show the darkness board this next time um, because it's just going to be adding one AP and that's it. Uh, I kept no cards and gave myself my hand full of cards. and. And uh, I kept uh, Blood of Gaia just in case and uh, drop some new cards, which I have multiple attacks. You in. get to lower your threat one because you have a space open. Yep, I go down to four. And now, if he chooses to attack, if I can't attack with my next hand, then it's not a big deal. And if I can't attack only one and he can attack two, we might just let him attack anyway because it's still not dangerous. Uh, during the refresh phase, the darkness gains one AP, which doesn't activate them. It shouldn't at five. Uh, and it's our turn. And. Um, if you can kill them, kill them, because I only can kill one. I can kill them. Well, let's do this then. Yeah. Uh, first I'll, I'm going to move two, and I'm going to pass the uh, Vitality Potion you to... You have less hit points than me. I got our Ore of the Elements. I'm fine. You better not blow it then. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and drink it then. Yeah. Boom! Don't ask for it back! Yep, it's too late. <laughs> so that puts me up to full health. <laughs> Hey, I live on the edge. Yeah, you do. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to uh, cast Blood of Gaia. So it's a 2 AP. We'll, the AP will be sitting on 1 now. So they will activate if I miss. I move normal, so I get to subtract a D10 from my dice pool. So I have 1 D10. That's your Hero's Edge, don't forget. Yeah, and 1 Fate Dice. And then I have 1 D10 and a Fate Dice from Hero's Edge. Uh, I also have Research activated right now. So if I fail, I can reroll one of the D10s. I need a five or better to hit. And I got a six, and I match my symbol, so I kill both of these minions with the cone effect, and I only gain one threat from it, which is ideal for me. All right, that clears the tile. Yes. So let's uh, rotate this down, and we can follow the legend again. Uh, we've already done that. There are no more treasures being spawned. We gained six gold. 
All right, so here's the six gold that the party will get. And we also have a merchant appear. Okay. So, you know, he comes, you know, wandering in from the, the shadows. Yeah. Oh, save me. Hey, it's Tenebrae Lightless. Oh, my it's gosh. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually pretty good. Uh, let's look at this merchant for a second. Yes, this is a good one. So, sells dagger, short sword, dark crystal, and draw from the blue deck. So, go ahead and draw from the blue deck. Okay, so here's the blue item the mantle of fate. Hmm, the mantle of fate. Remember when I said that I hope we should get some <laughs> apprentice items? That's okay, because the dagger and the short sword are both brigand items. Yes. And the dark crystal, I believe. That's also a, uh, a uh, apprentice. Apprentice item. Uh, and so we got to decide how much money we're going to spend here. Because I think, I think we're going to spend a lot. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at it, it could be a relic. We'll have to check. But. Yeah. So let's, let's find them and we'll come back to the film in a second. So we have the items out here. A dagger, short sword. Now, um, dual wielding doesn't appear until the next expansion, so I don't have to worry about that quite yet. Um, the dark crystal is a relic. It's not something for apprentices for an acolyte, but the mantle of fate is, and I'm sure he wants to buy it. Notice there's a question mark on the merchant, uh, which means you have to refer to how expensive it is, and I believe it says eight. Yes. Um, and the dagger is three. So if I spend three to buy the dagger, mm -hmm. that yep. leaves me one left. Yep. And you could sell that quiver. I can sell that quiver. So that's another one we have. So that's eight right there. He yeah. can buy. And I had two gold in my inventory. Right. So here's our total pool. And so I'm going to buy the dagger for sure. Now what's it do? It gives me... Uh, a d10, two fate dice, and if I um, gain um, the guile, I stay in shadows. But the short sword is also a good brigand item, so I may buy the short sword instead. Uh, yeah, if you wanted to be a suicide yeah, run guy. Yeah, if I want to be a shadows guy or a suicide run guy, and I, uh, I still think I'm going to pick the dagger because I like shadows. Um, uh, this is appealing because it gives me uh, two d10, which is nice. Um, and the hustle is automatically, which would have helped me in a suicide run situation. But I'm going to be, I'm going to let him be multiple damage person, and I need to be able to cook someone down, uh, because when we move into the next tile, there's going to be some kind of big mini boss or boss we're going to fight. So I'm going to bite by the dagger. All right. I'll go ahead and... That's my money. Take eight from our pool and buy the mantle of fate. All right. And I'm going to sell the robes while I'm there. Unless you want them, they're better than what you got. Are they? Yeah. I better... I'm going to put the robes on them yeah, because like, they are better than what I've got. <laughs> it's the same vitality, but... Yeah, but my plus one target number versus melee attacks, which is fantastic. Yes. Um, All right, so... Uh, yeah, the difference in the items that I equipped was two vitality, so I will raise it up to vitality. And... Uh, I know there's a, there was a question... Uh, He's equipping his items here. I'm going to rotate this over. Yeah. There was a question at one point that you can just unequip this and equip this and unequip this and equip this and unequip this and equip this and it heals. No, 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 healing. no, no. Yeah. No, you put it on and you raise your health, the difference between uh, basically the last armor you had on and the next. If you take this off, you're going to lose as much vitality as it's given to you. Yeah, I would lose three vitality and one, two, three would have me sitting on one life right now. <clears throat> So, um, that's that. Now, technically we don't have to be done. And you're saying, okay, what are you talking about? Tenebrae the Lightless has come in and goes, Hey, buddy, we could spend this serendipity to summon Talic Three Dunes. It's under serendipity, spend one. And we know he sells vitality potions. Correct. I don't know what vitality potions cost, but I would imagine it's two. Uh, I believe it is, but we could check and... And, and... and so if we wanted to summon it to have... One more vitality potion so that he's not uh, close, yeah, to, it's too, close it's... to dying, then we should do that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to spend this one serendipity, yep. and we're going to summon Talic Three Dunes. Here's his card. He comes in. He's selling vitality potions, focus potions, and draws from the deck. We don't care about the draws from the deck because we're just not going to buy them. We only have enough money to buy the vitality potions, so we're going to spend two for the vitality potion. Sweet. And I'm going to drink it. He's going to drink it. <laughs> In fact, he guzzles it before it's even out of uh, Talic Three Dunes' uh, grubby paws. Yes, exactly. 
So he gives himself hit points. One, two, three, four. I'm at sitting at eight because of my new maximum. I'm not even to my maximum now. Right. And we're done with this tile. Now we have to decide which direction we're moving out off. We came from this direction. Uh, we can move this direction. Let's go this way. All right, so we're going to slide this down. And uh, we'll be ready. So we decided we're going to go into a 4x6. Um, the Apprentice has done something this turn, but I haven't. Now, you know, I know we touch on this in the book, but there's those arrows. We could have set this any number of directions. We could have set it centered. We're going to set it to the edge and line up the two arrows, so it's going to be something like that. And since I haven't gone, I'm going to go ahead and move in one, two, and see what we can see. All right, well, uh... We roll... Yeah, are we going to have a hunting pack? Notice, you have to decide about the hunting pack before you roll for the trap. Right. <laughs> no. uh, I think a lot of people probably roll for the trap first, then decide if they want a hunting pack, but not us, no. Because uh, we do it the right way. <laughs> let's... Let's if, do grubbers. six grubbers. <laughs> Just because... Right. I don't know how much trouble I want to get in. We've already gotten into a lot of trouble, so... Yeah. Well, there's two red squares here, so I can't put them there. Mm-hmm. And they have to be, like, within... Uh, out of... Uh, they have to at least start four away, so I'm going to put them right there. It's going to be a... going to be a rough one. Way to, way to go, Kenny. Hey, I did what I had to do. <laughs> all right, and... Don't roll darkness. That's all. <laughs> hey! I rolled darkness. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that in a 4 by 6 It's the darkness falls trap. Oh, yeah. So now we get to, you know, show you one of the traps that a lot of people have uh, trouble with. So we've set up the hunting pack and the trap, darkness falls. Um, and I've moved in. And I'm going to go ahead and go one with the dark. So I'm in shadows. That's a good call because now you're now they'll try to not come in and threat range. You, right? Well, they're not in threat range. Right? right, so they don't gain AP. Yeah. And why? That's really important because if they gained AP and the trap's going to give us an AP, then it gives us fewer chances to uh, try to disarm the trap. Um, now, this trap is on the darkness symbol. The darkness symbol traps are supposed to be hard. If we fail at this trap, what happens? The darkness gets activated at 5. That's just something that it's bad deal, but we got to either disarm it or learn to deal with that. Um, it doesn't kill you if you fail. Uh, it, that's what happens. So we will try to succeed, and if we fail, then the darkness is going to activate at 5. We think we can still deal with that. Um, and, and, and the sliding scale, it's easier to disarm with more people, um, but it's easier to avoid... A darkness AP activation with two people. Uh, so, you know, uh, there's a give and a take kind of a situation here. So I'm going to pass, and I'm going to keep my uh, cunning to give me an extra bonus to try to roll, and I will discard the rest of my cards. Alright, and I will discard that blood of Gaia that I used last turn and draw to my hand. Here it is. Maybe we'll roll a guile and you'll get a chance to disarm it. Nope. Nope, it's nature. So nothing happens, trap-wise. So, it doesn't damage me, and it doesn't gain an AP. Right. Alright. Alright, this tile. Uh, my cards are killer cards. I, I can do a lot of damage this turn. Uh, but the first thing we have to do uh, is get the apprentice on the tile. Uh, we must. Alright. Because I'd like to have that hero's edge. <laughs> Well, I'm going to... I get double movement since I'm in this tile that's cleared. Yep. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to go there. So we can remove that other tile and zoom in on the one that matters. Yes, and I will pass the Hero's Edge token to the Brigand. All right, let's put that there. All right, so uh, with Hero's Edge, I'm going to go first. Or I'm going to go now. I'm going to interrupt your turn. Okay. Um, I can appear and kill one guy with ambush and then use suicide run and a hustle to kill four more. So I can kill these guys. However, I can kill this guy and come back and kill these guys if you can target a guy and kill him. I can. Alright, then let's do that. 
you're thinking, well, I mean, we're going to spend a lot of AP and we're going to go ahead and raise the darkness AP probably to 5 or 6, which allows us really no chance to disarm the trap. But that's what the trap's there to do. It's, you're going to make a decision, and since we only plan on playing one more tile past this, we might as well freaking kill these things now. And um, not take any excess damage. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm going to, I'm in shadows, so I'm going to shadows reach. Okay, so. For one. It's on one use, AP. I'm going to use it as a reaction. One, two, three, and attack. Sweet, and you got that sweet dagger. Yes. It's a 1d10 for myself, 1d10, two fate dice for me, and Hero's Edge gives me a d10 and a fate die, right? And two fate dice from your uh, shadow combo. Oh my goodness, what's going on here? And you haven't moved. And I haven't moved. So. Okay, you only needed a three to hit, and you got a six. Uh, and a guile symbol. And a couple guile symbols. Yeah. So even if I was going to come out of shadows, I won't because I hit my shadows bonus on my dagger. So I get to stay in shadows. This guy's dead, and I'll raise my threat one. He's dead. He doesn't even know why. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and now I'm going to suicide run. And this is where having that short sword would be pretty sweet. Because he could have cleared the whole tile, possibly. Right. But in this case, I still haven't moved. Notice, I haven't moved with the suicide run. I get an additional d10 and an additional fate die. You will be playing an aggressive card, though. So Yes, it's will... true. I will be playing an aggressive card. So I'll go ahead and play Hustle, which makes me a yes. 1, 2 AP for both yep. of those cards. My D10, my D10, and my Fate Dice. Fate Dice and D10 for me. Yeah. And you still have that Shadows bonus. Yes. You got this. And so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Mm -hmm. Oh, you stayed I got, in Shadows. Oh, I stayed in Shadows, and that's... I enjoy the Shadow Rogue because I get to stay in Shadows, and it reduces the capacity for me to take damage. So boom, 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 easily succeeded. I'll These take... four are dead. Yeah, we've got one treasure token appearing there. I gain four threat. One, two, three, four. Notice how his fate dice symbol no longer lowers threat, so... Right. <laughs> now it's just straight gains. And I have fulfilled my destiny and completed my full action bar, so it is your turn. Uh, and making sure we did the AP on that? I did. All right, very good. <clears throat> All right, well, since we don't need to go crazy, I'm just going to play a regular old attack card for one AP. Yes. Now, explain what's going on there. Okay, so when I'm using a regular attack card on the Apprentice, I will consult the Enchanted Twig in the primary slot to gain my extra dice. Yes. So one D10 and a Fate Dice for my Hero Token, and one D10 for the Enchanted Twig. I no longer have Hero's Edge because I passed it along, uh, but I will gain the bonuses from research if I miss. And that is one AP, correct? Yep, and uh, he's within range three of my wand. So here we go, need a five. Do it. Got a 10 and an 8. Yes. So I kill him and he takes one damage. Now that puts me at 6 threat. Uh, so I'm at 5 and he's <laughs> at 6. Yep. But look at, let's look at this tile for a second. This tile's clear now. This turns into a gold. Mm -hmm. and, well, until we leave, the yeah. tile isn't clear That's because right. the trap is active. And this is why this is important because. If in the next round we don't get hit by the trap, we won't gain AP. And if we don't, we can actually leave this tile, mm -hmm. not mess with trying to disarm the trap, and it's not going to hurt us because the darkness isn't going to raise. And and before, at the beginning, it certainly didn't look like that, but it certainly is the case now. Um, so uh, I'm done, and you're done. Yep. So now we go to the hand refresh phase. Yep, and I'm not lowering any threat. I'm, I'm going to keep cunning. I'm going to ditch all my cards. So if I have a chance to disarm that trap, I will. Hey! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now you see me, I'll take that hustle and hustle. Okay, well you can run. <laughs> I can run. <laughs> I'm going to pick up that treasure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might as well. Alright, so there is no AP to be gained. But... Because there's nothing... Here to raise it. Right. And now we're at the start of our hero cycle and we're going to roll a fate dice for each of us. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and roll your one. Maybe you'll get a guy. Or, or mine. Nope. So let's see. Or if a I soldier get... when you need him. I know. 
So many rage symbols. He's in the, he's in the tavern. I rolled a guile, so the brigand's gonna get a chance to disarm, and he has to discard a card to do so. So I've got hustle, hustle, I'll take that, and now you see me. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of I'll take that, and I'm gonna play cunning to try to disarm that trap. All right. So I get a d10 and a d10 mm -hmm. for myself. I'm not within range for research, so that's not nope. going to help me. And Hero's Edge doesn't help me uh, with non-combat action. So here's my chance. What do I need? You need a seven. Well, let's not screw it up, huh? Yeah. You got a seven, so you've disarmed it once. And when that happens... And I didn't take any damage, and because I didn't take any damage... The AP's the, not going to raise. Right. And so he puts the rune token underneath, and if we disarm it... A how, few many, more how many more times? Two more times, I believe, is right? Two more times. Yeah. So we might be able to, to succeed at this, or we may just decide to leave and not risk it. What do we get if we disarm the trap? Because that's really what traps are for. Do you want a, the, the risk-reward of all the traps? The only thing that we would get for this trap is three serendipity. Well, three and serendipity is quite a bit because we can freaking use that to summon allies yeah, or... Yeah, it's not a bad thing. Well, especially because <laughs> I think we're going to fight a boss in the, next, in the next tile. We're going to try to fight a boss, that is. Uh, if you want to move and try to pick it up, I'm gonna can. I'm gonna pick up this treasure if that's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine. One, two, buckle my shoe, pick up the treasure. So you move normal. You're out of shadows. Right. I uh, decided to use my cunning as an action, so we don't have a loitering penalty. Oh, well, I need the treasure bag, my dogs. All right. There is a blue token in there now. I know. We better. <laughs> I better. I better pull it right now. Oh, not that one. Oh, we'll take a green. All right. Green. Thieves' tools. Hmm. hmm. What do I want to do with that? Uh, thieves' tools is a minus two target number to non-combat actions. Clearly would help me now. And may <laughs> attack layers using non-combat actions. So every single card I have now has some kind of potential to do something. Um... You have to give up that dirty blanket. I'm going to give up the dirty blanket because I have the I have the the uh, dagger now, so I can stay in shadows more easily. I can't equip it until uh, the refresh phase, so oh. we'll hold on to it. But I'm definitely going to switch my thieves' tools out with the dirty blanket. Uh, since I can't do anything else, um, I'm going to go ahead and move up two because that's all I got for right now. All right, what cards are we keeping? I got one I'm keeping. Chaotic Overflow. I'm not keeping any cars. You lower your threat? Mine did. It's going to go down a whole point. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> did you want to reassign your hero's edge? Probably not. I don't need to. All right. So we'll roll the fate dice at the start of the hero cycle. Well, my thieves' tools are now equipped, and I... Threw my dirty blanket on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, threw it on the ground. Mine. Arcane, so I'm going to get a chance to disarm this trap. That's pretty sweet. And, I wasn't expecting And that. you're in research, so... I'm going to discard the attack card to make a d10 roll, and I need a 7 to do so. If I fail, I can use research. Use research. I got a 10, got a so 10. it's... Disarmed. So that's two of the three. Yeah, so we've we taken no damage. Uh, doing pretty good. Yeah, and you get to roll my fade die, right? We hope. Yeah, I hope it happens too. Oh, uh, I've already disarmed it once, so I cannot attempt another disarm this hero cycle. But we're definitely going to stay in the tile and try to take care of this. Uh, yeah, because three sensitivity is pretty good, and we have not raised the AP yet, right. so. All right, so uh, we. We were accelerating through the end of that the last two turns, and um, we should have actually taken two loitering penalties. Uh, we're still on this tile, uh, but you need to spend an AP, um, and I, we didn't spend one last round, and we didn't spend one the last the round before that when I spent cunning because cunning, while an action doesn't cost, it doesn't have any AP on it. So, so I'm gonna so, remove these two tokens. And so we have a total of three loitering penalties thus far. Um. All right, well, I've got my new cards, and we can roll, and let's let's hope that a guile symbol shows up, since you actually have the thieves' tools. And or an arcane symbol. I'll accept but, it. Yeah, so <laughs> let's just do this. All right. It's mine. Darkness. That's all I roll. Hey! Woo! Go hell. So, what are uh, you going to discard? I'm going to discard... Uh, 
Now you see me. You've got this. You got 1d10, right? But it's a minus 2. I get 1d10, minus 2 target number, and I have research, so. Yes, because I'm right next to you, showing you the books <laughs> on how this trap is disarmed. You got a 6, you don't even need it, because you needed a 5. So. So we would the put last... the final token out. Yeah. Here it is. Ding. And we've disarmed the trap, which, which awards us three serendipity. Yay. One, two, three. And it's still our turn, so we can actually move into the next Yeah, tile. the next tile, and we should do so, because we're as prepared as we're going to get. 